Hey guys, what's up? This is Rapid, and I'm bringing you another scrim. Today it's going to be between these guys. This is Fly Society Gaming down here. Let me go ahead and introduce their players. We have Sunjo of Joseon running Skarner, so he will be jungling for there. There was so much suspense. Yeah, somebody is definitely running this on their TI-89 Gaming Edition. So yeah, Devastation on Ash. The Korean Terror supporting on Sona. Gragas by Andy of Love going mid, and Nosjax. Going top lane with Irelia. I love her base skin. It's so awesome. The other side we have Team Lift, which is actually L-I-T-H-F-P. I'm not actually going to keep focusing there because it's hella noisy. But anyway, Rarbish, still noisy again. Seven Envy, Searing Arrow, and Ice Gen. See, we can focus on Ice Gen because he's uh, well, A, not jungling, and B, not making that noise. So anyways, um, it looks like Flash Society Gaming has moved down to the bottom bush, and uh, usually we'll see purple teams invade to the tri bush right here, but it looks like they are just hanging out right here, kind of daring Flash Society Gaming to move in here. Lil Will will spot this, he sees them coming, he actually backs out of the bush, and uh, yeah, it looks like he has given them position, so will we see Lith actually move over here? Looks like they're just going to go ahead and back and get ready for the game to start. That's what Olaf did. He will be picking up a fourth potion right about now. 60. Okay, so Fly Society Gaming's all hanging out here. I'm not sure if... Oh my goodness, they're just going to wait for unsuspecting members of the team to go in there. They're going to go in here on blue. They get the slow off. The flash goes off almost immediately. Rarbish forced the flash as well. But the flash for the ignite. The heal is good enough to prevent that from uh, being a kill. But uh, they pick up the blue buff. Seven Envy going to go down almost immediately. Andy of Love picks up the kill. And Sunjo of Joseon actually being able to flash out of there. Wow. So many summoners being used. Use smite to get the blue buff. Use flash to get out of there. And oh my goodness. Yeah, these guys think they're hella funny, right? Okay, so top lane, Ice Chan versus Nosjax. I don't know how you go up against an Aurelia as Olaf. Olaf kind of um, does this thing where he dies a whole lot. Seven Envy looks like he is not going to lag out. No, he actually is. There's going to be this periodic lagging here. The servers have been doing this for me all day long. Uh, looks like Rarbish isn't lagging out, so that's good. Meanwhile... Back to the action at hand, uh, yeah, Nosjax is kind of winning this heavily, has, both, they both have, uh, he went cloth five, he went boots and four, so that's definitely going to be in Nosjax's favor, cloth five is such a good way to start when you know you're going to be going up against a heavy AD top laner, they could have done an epic switch right now, but, uh, oh, that ping was just because Sunjo of Joseon went low in the jungle, I was like, oh my goodness, where's the death going on? I can't find it. So anyways, yeah, Seven Envy is going to be jungling Fiddlesticks. It's really interesting because after the jungle changes, AoE junglers are just so ridiculously strong. Like uh, like you can see there, after the drain is off cooldown, it just doesn't matter. She's forced to auto attack to kill those minions. If we go ahead and check out the jungle route, Scarner did get the opposing blue, so we'll probably get this blue to Gragas. An early blue on Gragas is just ridiculously good. Is going up against the brand, so he really needs some sort of uh, means of harassment. Yeah, Greg is going to go over there, snag the blue buff, and it looks like top lane is even going in favor of Devastation. Got a crit off. I don't know how you do that, but uh, if we check his his crit chance right now, it's at 6%, so that's just from the passive. So he literally had like a 6% chance to crit, walked up, and got it on Lil' Will. So we see a little bit of lag here. Again, this should alleviate itself in a few moments. But after that initial kill, things have kind of calmed down here. We haven't seen a really strong jungle gank right now. We see Envy just going for his red buff. Finally picks it up. We'll drain off of the uh, golem, but or off of the mini lizard. But really, denying Searing Arrow, that initial blue, is just so painful. If you uh, look at the CS right now, Gragas is sitting at 20, whereas Brand actually has 24, so... I'm impressed. I definitely should have looked at that before making, you know, my, my epic casting predictions. But uh, Warden that bush, they do know it's there because they have seen minions try to aggro them in that bottom bush. But top lane, I'm a little bit more impressed. We have Cloth 2 and Boots 3 now for Olaf. So he's been doing a really good job of just harassing with his axe. Not even Oom, so he's, uh, I, I approve. And it looks like both, uh, both top and mid are going really well for Lyft. 
I just really want to say lisp because I don't actually lisp, but it's just, you know, one more way that teams control me endlessly. Skarn, who once again dropping really low in his jungle. I'm not sure if that's uh, supposed to happen. Maybe he just has the wrong runes. He's up to 53 armor, so that should be plenty for jungling. And he is actually regenerating a lot as he moves along there. So he will continue to pop that Q, farm off those wolves. Fiddlesticks is stuck in an endless strain, which is actually kind of interesting. We can kind of check that out there. Now just taking tons and tons of damage from wolves, but uh, once we get things started back up again, I don't think that will be happening too, too much. There we go, back to the action! Ice Jan is just gonna farm up all of those, uh, all those minions full clearing that. Uh, was that Fiddlesticks? Or was that actually Lil Will who just got chunked? Noxious goes back, he's gonna pick up a lot of the parts to, uh... Actually, I thought he would have gotten a, a sword, but Lifesteal and Boots and also getting a ward there. So he's gonna go back and get a little bit of everything, whereas Ice Jan, who's just been doing such a good job forcing Aurelia Ethan out of lane, which is not easy to do with only Boots and Pots. You can see he too is up to 54 armor with 93 attack damage. We checked the attack damage on Aurelia, only 73. So you can see that it's coming out so, so strong right now. For Olaf, top lane. Uh, just trying to check the positioning. What are these teams' objectives? Dragon is up, but we are only six minutes into the game, so there's not going to be another dragon f or a dragon fight until maybe a couple more minutes. Eight minutes is usually a standard early dragon. You can wait until like ten, but after, at that point, there are usually enough, you know, buying patterns. People have usually completed enough weapons or items on their character to be able to uh, contest that pretty handily. And at that point in the game, the advantage is a little bit more solidly. Oh, wow, the Korean Terror, real Terror, not getting that Q off. If he had power corded and gotten that Q, ouch, that Graves be a little bit uh, hard-pressed to do something right now. Level 6 is up for top lane, and like I said, it's only Boots and Pots versus a whole lot more, and somehow... Wow, I think Ice Jan definitely meant to put that onto Nostjax, but having missed that and actually hurt himself there, he is looking to... He's so aggressive right now. If only they had a Skarner top lane, they could, uh, they could get something done there. But, uh, oh wow, Nostjax put himself behind Ice Jan, and he will be actually pushing onto that. Does not want to take too much minion aggro, because he knows that... It really is deceptive. She A has that Vampiric Scepter and B has uh, her Heat 10 style, which is already level 3. So maxing Heat 10 style is such a good way to lane. Gives you so much true damage and also that healing effect. We're going to see the first gank of the game. Which I just missed. I was like, hey, you know, this is uh, it's actually pretty frozen, so I'm just going to run away there. Andy of Love took the hard way out and is now currently in the jungle, but Sujo of Joestan is ghosting into the top bushes. Not the summoner spell, the uh, the action of moving into that bush when creeps don't have vision. Tried to harass down Olaf, but Olaf is just unstoppable right now. If we go ahead and check out his items, just went back and straight picked up a Wriggles and Pots with boots. Ouch, that's a little bit uh, a little bit effective there. Check out creep scores, 35 to Olaf, 66! So he's kind of being an unstoppable force top lane, and that's just, um, you know, maybe that's on Nostjax, maybe it's actually just on, uh, you know, Olaf being a really good top laner that, uh, you know, works only under some circumstances, but uh, apparently Aurelia is one of those circumstances. Check things out over here, Gragas and the Skarner are going to move around to uh, get the second blue buff. Actually, third blue buff of the game. First one went on to Skarner, he actually still has that. I'm not sure how Skarner got that uh, blue buff again. Actually, it's just not wearing off. And there goes the second blue buff onto Andy of Love. He's just gonna walk his fat self over there through the wall. Brand is actually coming over here. Maybe looking to gank down here outside of ward range. There's a ward right there, but that will not detect him. Actually, did they see him coming? Yeah, they are gonna back off there. If we check their vision. They just want to make sure that he left there. The arrow is going to go off. It's going to miss entirely. 
No stun, no suppression, so much damage coming off. Auto Sujo of Joseon. One more auto attack is gonna do it. The flash out is good, but the Graves dashing over the wall. Lil Will picks up the kill. Will Searing Arrow go down? Yes, Searing Arrow goes down. Devastation flashes out of there, but it's still gonna dish out the DPS from the back. Lil Will is trying to dash back over there. Gets over the wall with a flash. Not sure how that rendered on our screen, but uh, wow. One to two, actually, so... That uh, came down really clutch. Is Andy of Love going to be able to make it out? One more hit. We'll seal the deal. The true damage is good enough. But will the Ignite pick up Envy? Envy is trying to drain through it. Gets the drain off at the very last second. So that is absolutely amazing. I am so impressed right now. Lisp is actually coming back in this game in a big way. Ice Jet is actually moving around here. Will she be able to get the slow? I keep calling her she because... There's a Jan in the name. Hits the axe on Devastation. The cloud is out, but will we actually see Ice Jan go for that? No. Uses Ragnarok earlier, so it's not actually available right now. Otherwise, he could have sped on through that turret and gotten the damages. But uh, right now, Fiddlesticks, neither Fiddlesticks nor Brand, both of which need blue, have it. So, Skarner's actually here at red. Meanwhile, Searing Arrow is going to try to get some work done on these... Uh, Rays walks out of vision range of the big wraith, but uh, is able to finally pick that up. It's actually going to be a scumbag brand and leave a wraith there. So, Sunjo of Joseon, I cannot pronounce that correctly at all, but uh, actually Searing Arrow getting a lot of damage done. Will we actually see a flash barrel? No, yes! Barrel, such long range, faster than the brand now. Brand actually, I don't believe, had boots. No, she, he had boots, three pots. Or uh, three Dorans, so he's he's actually having a lot of trouble here. Mid versus Andy, and and uh, yeah, Andy's kind of pulling it out here. He is already four and one versus an zero and three brand. So that's how you kind of know things are going in your favor when your mid is pulling out that kind of kind of dirty work. Ice Jade is going to come back into lane, double buffed after getting that kill, and that's going to be so hard for Nosjax to farm up against. Really, uh, one of those really farm dependent champion needs those, uh, those items, whether it's, you know, um, uh, Riggles, or actually, yeah, still hasn't gotten the Riggles, or, you know, Randuins, or Trinity Force, whatever you need, you need that item on Irelia, but uh, she's having a lot of problems, and actually, the blue being stolen once again, also given to Gragas, so Gragas is pretty much perma blued this game, and uh, there was a ward there, but that was not Lisp's ward, that was definitely a... They are four flies inside the game. They're jumping out of Lil Will. Lil Will go down almost immediately. He's trying to pick off Devastation because he knew he could not get away from there. Might have had a chance with some nice Jenna CC, but uh, with Jenna just kind of staying still. And actually, the ult over the wall. Fierce Devastation, but Devastation, yes, will pick up a kill. And it's just going to try to walk over and actually flashes back over the wall. So, so many blink strikes used there. Picks up the kill on Graves, or actually on Ash. Graves picked up over here by the turret. And yeah, I definitely think there's something that uh, Janna could have done to help that. Actually doesn't have boots and is just kind of walking around here, not getting a whole lot done. Fiddle6 is going to walk over here and start his jungle path once again. But uh, yeah, Andy of Love dominating top lane and actually Ice Jan just dominating... Well, top lane, I think I meant to say mid lane earlier, but uh, whatever, yeah. I realize just going to walk back while meanwhile Ice Jan gets some work done on this turret. Skarner... And Gragas are both coming up, so that should signal Ice Jan to GTFO. Knows something's happening. He does have a ward right there, and I don't think, yeah, Gragas is out of range of that ward. So Gragas is actually speeding up there as fast as he can. Will he be able to get anything done? No. Misses the barrel. And that's going to be all she wrote. Uh, Ice Jan is just going to be able to back off there. It's always at full health. Still has double buff. Actually, no, just has the red buff now. They're pinging onto Dragon, so the Oracle's on Janna. Did clear out their ward while so many members of Fly Society Gaming are top lane. They may want to go for this dragon. They have four members there. I'm not sure why they're backing out. Top isn't there, and... I mean, Bot is there, but... Maybe not the best choice. There's no ward there for Fly Society Gaming, so they definitely could have gotten something done. But uh, just opting to... Avoid that kind of concentration right now and honestly that's good because this is the laning phase and there's So much going in favor for Lisp right now that they really uh, they kind of want to draw this out There are two kills behind and those two kills are Gragas But if Bran can stop the feeds mid lane then they're gonna be in really really good shape as Olaf who scales so well late game with all that true damage 
It's just going to be unstoppable because they're just letting him AFK free farm. He has 126 farm right now. That's ridiculous. Against Irelia, who's one of the strongest top laners in, in the game, it just has Gragas. They're telling him to hit R because they definitely don't want to deal with that uh, Gragas ult in 5C. It's going to function like a... Uh, like a Lee Sin or a Janna against what would be like a Kennen, because Fiddle Six is gonna ult in on them. He's gonna wait in that bush, and he's gonna use the ult. Oh my goodness, so smart! There goes the ult, pops the seven envy immediately. Searing arrow is gonna go down as well. The ignite picking up the kill there. Ice Jade comes out from top lane, but he is a little bit late to the party. Graze actually backs out. <laughs> yeah, they're saying you know land your R's and you know. That'll be a little bit more comparable. Andy of Love getting beset here by an angry Olaf, but uh, Andy's love is too much as Nox, Nox Jax comes down from top lane. Andy of Love actually dropping really low here as well. Korean Terror low as well, and also wants to protect that Oracle if something happens as well again. Oh my goodness, there goes the slowdown. Nox Jax equalizes it up with that true damage, but uh, just pots and runs away. As uh, definitely did not want to fight both Nox Jax and Gragas, so... Fiddle Six is on his way. He's gonna do some work. He's a little bit butthurt. He didn't get that uh, sexy, sexy crow storm damage that he wanted last game. Just getting popped immediately because Gragas kind of kills squishies in like two hits. Do we see a death cap? No, just a uh, needlessly large rod, which apparently is a little bit more needful as he's been doing so much damage with that. Olaf just returning to free farm. I don't know why this is actually happening. Uh, maybe jungler camping top would be a good idea, but right now we see both junglers here. And right now, 7 Envy, yeah, is going to happen across a poor, unsuspecting Nosjax, except that he is suspecting because there's a ward right there. He's going to try to B, try to bait him out there. Skarner is actually waiting in the wings. Does he have Flash up? No, he does not, so he wouldn't have been able to get in there in any sort of a timely manner. Brand dropping a ward at the red buff. They're like, hey, uh, Sunjo, you want to come up here and uh, snag this with me? But no, just uh, throws a barrel in there, tries to see if anybody's there, but backs off. Not a whole lot going down. Is his blue buff almost done? No, it is pretty fresh. So after, I guess, did he take the blue buff from Fiddlesticks? Let me go ahead and uh, toggle vision so we can see absolutely everything. Yeah, Blue Buff's still there, so I don't know why they're not giving that to Brand quite yet. That could possibly be where he is running to right now. Looks like Janna's going to come over, but I don't think she's very good at doing Blue Buffs. Meanwhile, Skarner just picking up their red bot lane left to uh, a little bit absent. Ash going back to heal a little bit more mana. I'm not sure if she's waiting for like a zeal. Yes, there it goes. Winner, I call all the things. So yeah, blue buff actually on Fiddlesticks. I don't think somebody who teleports in the middle of the enemy team while only being able to CC one member of it is a good person to give blue. And actually, wow, 7 Envy trying to juke this Skarner. Actually, Skarner sees him there. Is he going to call for the Gragas to come over? Why is 7 Envy? They're pinging. Both people know that the other is there. Gragas and Brand will converge here. There goes Skarner off and ult 7 Envy. The dash over there. Oh my goodness, the flash out just in time, but the ignite is good enough. Andy of Love will pick up yet another blue buff. And right now, this guy... This guy's doing work. Fat Man is on the job. 7 and 1. Gonna be able to go back and pick up his death cap. We check out the gold count. He is at 6,700. No one else even close. 68. Soon to be 69. <laughs> Fiddle 6 is saying, you know, 18 minutes. And he finally gets his blue buff. <laughs> for like 2 seconds. Top lane also being dominated here by Olaf, so this is really who can uh, who can do more work. Olaf only has one kill, but with 160 farm, and actually you have to compare the 160 farm against the 75 farm for Aurelia, which is absolutely absolutely punishingly low. 83 farm actually on Fiddlesticks versus only 51 for Skarner. So Skarner, eh, you could be doing a little bit better. Needs to you know be farming the creeps, doing the damages. You know, stuff like that that's good for junglers to do. Nasjax still doing a really good job sustaining top lane, even though we already have Phage and Giant's Belt completed 
on Ice Jax, and that is, that's really interesting. You don't see Trinity Force too much. Actually, wow, missing that slow. If that slow had hit, that guy would have been popped right there. They're pinging on the brand, or actually onto Ash bot lane. Lil Will taking some damage as he does not have that massive sustain for Sona, and I think that with the upcoming nerfs to Sona and Soraka, that's going to make things a lot uh, rougher for sustain in the bot lanes, but those have not been put into place. And we still do have Sona as basically number one support, can do basically, you know, everything that you could ever want. Soon Joe, Joseon is waiting in there, the Ash initiation comes off, immediate flash, actually a miss by the Korean Terror, so real terror right now. Whiffing that ult, and uh, so much CC there, I'm not sure how they didn't get that, they had a Skarner ult, actually did he have an ult? Yeah, Skarner ult, Ash arrow, and a Janna ult, or a Sona ult. And he managed to get out, you can tell he was hammering that flash button as fast as humanly possible. Seven Envy waiting here, I'm not sure if Andy of Love knows what's up, does he have a ward there? No. He does not know what's in that bush, and there comes the ult off, he's actually baiting him, gets feared, the flash in from Ice Jet, and Andy of Love! Oh my goodness, so much destruction right there. All over his fat, fat body. And that's why you ward your, uh, that's why you ward your brush there when there's a fiddle on the enemy team. Nostrak's actually getting bursted down a little bit. The ult coming off from Sujo of Joseon. The ignite actually on Nostrak's. Will he be able to pick up Sierra Arrow in time? No, gets popped almost immediately. And, uh, this is the turnaround. And actually, wow, the auto attack goes off for devastation. Flashing in there for the kill. So awesome to see Ash just get in there, do the dirty work, knows she has as much damage as she needs to do that, and wow, the Korean Terror actually knowing that Ash is mid lane means that uh, he needs to get out of there. One more ult, yeah, the ult does go off, the ignite, the flash, he is trolling them around under turret. Ash is there, but will she actually misses the Q, but uh, yeah, Korean Terror goes down almost immediately, I'm not sure that was worth it. Sujo Jozan is going to try to get in here, and oh my goodness, I cannot keep up. This exciting action. Ignite actually going down on Scarter. Will Scarter actually get out of there? No. The ult used by Ash, but will she actually have enough damage? The flash from Rarbage keeping Ash CC'd for so long. Slow is down, but will she have enough damage to pick off Lil Will? The shield is down, increasing his damage. The troll heal goes off, but will it be enough? No. Devastation popping. Uh, wow. Double heal there. And Lil Will just sustaining so much. The, nut, the level of trolls right there was like it could rip a tank in half. Like, I don't even know. That guy, so much mind games going on there. Phil just drain taking Dragon, gets the smite off, and the game has turned around. If we check out the gold count, it is 31k to 28, almost 29, so about a 1, thousand, 1500 gold difference. It is 22 minutes in the game, so that's not quite as significant, but when you see where the gold is stacked, you see a Gragas with a death cap blasting one. If we go ahead and click on Andy, we can see he is up to 385 AP. No death cap yet on Brand, who went Chalice of Harmony. He was like, dang son, I ain't getting no blues, no love, and had to go Chalice, so that really sucks. You know what helps him lane, because, you know, he gets the magic resist, and he has a little bit more mana regen. But, uh, yeah, not what you're looking for when you're going AP mid, so... Ice Jan, he's doing work. Between top lane and bottom lane... Ugh, sorry guys, had to take a brief drink, and in the midst of that, Skarder going down to Fiddlesticks, and right now Fiddlesticks, he's kind of feeling himself, you know, he's got the blue pot, he has the hex deck, probably gonna go pick up, wow, devastation, I, I hopped in there at the exact moment to see that arrow do some dirty work all over his face, he, uh, he's like, what's up son, now you ain't got no summoners, Bran actually finally getting a blue, which is a pretty impressive. 24 minutes into the game and you get your first blue is AP mid. That's, uh, yeah, that, that's bad, okay? So, he has that now and he's gonna go back to mid. It is 11 to 10, so still a one kill advantage for Fly Society Gaming, but they're just like, they're kind of like standing still. And this is the point in the game where you really want to have solidified some sort of advantage through accomplishing, you know, you know, significant objectives. They haven't... The objectives that they have are uh, basically a 7-2 Gragas, who will just get ridiculously scaled. He's gonna go for some sort of... Uh, probably a... Uh, mm, 
Now I'm gonna go Rylize. Probably gonna get the magic penetration at 40%. Not gonna do an Abyssal Scepter or anything crazy like that. As Brandon is not really a factor right now. He does not have the AP. He has 148 versus almost a 300 for Gragas. Yeah, 389, almost 400. So his AP right now, this guy is not a factor. He has a really interesting ult, but it's just not gonna do the damages in team fights. Whereas Gragas. Oh wow, baited the. Oh, that's so dirty! Had a ward there, saw the fiddle over there, walked up and just baited fiddlesticks. The actual once again, is up. The, the ult goes off the slow. The damage being done by Ash there is so massive. Has that Phantom Dancer, Wriggles, and Double Door ends with those attack speed boosts. Apparently enough. Yeah, apparently Fiddlesticks is hacking because... He was able to laugh there while he was stunned. I'm not sure if that's like a function of the dance from the... Uh, Sona ult, but as that was not used, that's a little bit impossible. Janna is still coming in to the bottom. So right now Lith, but you know, they, they failed one of their plays. Dragon will be coming up here in a couple minutes. So we'll see if they choose to uh, use that as their playmaking opportunity. Graves went so much lifesteal. This double, double Vamp Scepter is really interesting. You can turn in one into Wriggles, the other into like a Bloodthirster. May actually be thinking about getting some sort of, you know, wacky attack speed item like the new Starks, but I don't really think that's what you want. Actually missing a kill up here, top lane. Ice Jan just going hard in the paint. You can see he took that much damage. Shoot through about uh, 2,000 health almost. But uh, just was not enough. Sierra Gero walking into Sutro of Joseon. And will Aishan be able to pick up even more kills? We're going to follow him right now. This, the uh, Randuance goes off, but this is going to be a double kill. Aishan is on a killing spree. Doesn't look like that was actually a double kill. But he's just like, you can't do anything against that. He's just such a giant bully. He's going to heal off, off of absolutely everything. But after a DC... From, I'm gonna guess maybe it's Nosjax? It's not Searing Arrow. Did he DC? No, he's just kind of trolling over there. But Olaf's like, chill out guys, I got this. Actually, it was Brand DC. He's kind of chilling out up there. Already has an infedge, but he's not doing a whole lot right now. And Olaf is one of those carries. He can carry your entire team if he gets tanky enough. Actually, already has an Atmos up to 240 damage there scaling so so well off of health actually pops a bit once again onto Andy of Love gets the perpetual slow picks up the axe will be able to throw it again actually gets ulted will we see him pop his ult there his ult is down right now he will go down no he flashes away and he's actually gonna get out the fiddle six ult is good picking up the kill there onto Andy Korean terror flashing away Nosjax wants some of this actually he flashes it will he be able to pick up the kill on Ice Chan so much damage going down yes Ice Chan does go down with the Scarter ult on 7 NB, he will go down next. Rarbish does not want anything to do with that. Has perfect ward coverage, but uh, that will go down there to Janna. And this looks like it could be a Baron 3-man? Yes? No? They will try this. Nosjax is hella tanky. He has nothing but Warmogs, Wriggles, and 1-speed. So will they actually attempt this? I think Nosjax could successfully take it. They are going to do this. The Recurve Bow complete onto Sunjov Joseon. They can't trade taking this. I'm not sure if the Korea Terror is going to be able to heal up as much as uh, is necessary. But uh, with a ward in there, I'm not sure. I think Korea Terror should definitely go in there and, uh, you know, heal up that ward. Damage going on to Nosjax. He will not be able to take that anymore. If he keeps getting attacked, he will almost certainly die. They do not have enough damage to do that Baron. And that is absolutely horrible for there. Will it really actually go down? Nosjax getting focused. They are just signaling... Dude, if they could get that Ash up there, that's going to work out. But no, having to back off finally as every member of their team is so low. And that was an absolutely horrible decision. They wasted so much time. They could have gone back and bought. Now this is going to give Lith a little bit of time to uh, counter that. But uh, this is exactly the time that they need. As uh, before, Until Little Will connects, they can't really do much. He was doing so much work. Four and two, actually. Beating this Ash has one more death, even one be wanting her. But actually, that was a lie. Ash is just gonna one man Baron down there. Has that agility pot already, so once you get up to six items, that is kind of the new meta. You go six items and then pot. You don't want to sell your Dorans quite that early because Dorans really give you a peak 
and once you start selling them, they really kind of fall off. Sure, they function kind of like GP5s. And actually, Andy of Love, Sujo of Joza are going to go out here on a Searing Arrow. The ult even being used by Skarner. I'm not sure if that was necessary. But uh, yeah, right now, Fiddlesticks not looking too good for our heroes. Actually, no, the ult was reset. I heard the animation, but it did not go off. So, unless Skarner's using some mad ult hacks, that was, uh, that was good enough to pick up double kills there. And this is exactly what Fly Society Gaming needs. Yeah. No, DC is OP, but uh, undone immediately. So, Baron is actually going to be taken for Frizzle here. Unless Olaf can do something. Olaf is going to run into five people. It cannot go in there. He's on the wrong side of the world right now. Apparently, Graves had some sort of power surge. Olaf is going to jump in there. He's going to be attacking Devastation. Gets him down to half health. Will he actually be able to get the kill off onto Baron? Baron does not get stolen. Flash Society picks up the kill. Ice Jade goes down. And now that their carry is gone... Even with Lil Will connected, he is only level 14. Save level is the support. Whereas we have 16, 17 level, level 17 Ash, level 18 Gragas. That is absolutely horrible. Ash actually asking for a rematch. So it looks like they may actually go ahead and call a preemptive GG. It is 18 to 15 with a level 14 Graves. He may try to farm up here, but uh, yeah, they are looking for that rematch afterwards. Andy of Love killing those minions so, so fast. He is up to, yeah, like I said, a Void Staff with a hat. Probably going to go for either a Woda or something to give himself those massive burst heals in the middle of fights. Lil Will and 7 Envy picking up the double golems, actually leaving the big one for the AD carry. No! Scumbag Fiddle denies the, the uh, XP. So at this point in the game, if you're a Fly Society Gaming, you gotta be thinking, hey, we have a 233 CS Ash with all the items she needs to do ridiculous amounts of damage. And as long as we protect her, it's kinda GG. Like, sure, Graves has the burst, but he has two items, whereas Ash has five. The difference being that uh, this Wriggles here is going to be so, so good for Ash, just giving her that extra amount of armor. When you have 112 armor on a carry, that's a little bit uh, effective. They get the Ash arrow out, and 7 Envy finally gets picked up by the Korean Terror, that power cord following the flash. Sujo Joseon actually gets stunned there, but uh, makes it out, was not in turret range. Olaf is just kind of waiting in the wings, has that red pot potted. So much pokeling here, and actually, if I can stop yawning for about two seconds, I will be able to drop some fat knowledge bombs. Namely, these guys are a little bit low right now. Ash actually sustaining through everything. Ice Jan gets caught out. He pops his ult to get out of there. He's thinking about turning around, but uh, with only 900 health, he will be forced to back away. And that's his ult. That's Olaf's ult gone. He has that all during a fight. It's kind of GG. So much damage actually being dished out by Brand, who finally has a hat. Actually going for that Giant's Belt, so he's forced to go for a Randuin's, or a Rylai's rather. So much poke trying to clear these minion ways as fast as humanly possible. Oh my goodness, look at that chunk. That was absolutely ridiculous. Fiddlesticks ulting in there, but Devastation says, chill out guys. I got this. Three shots, fiddle sticks, and then it's like, you know, GG. Every time those barrels land, it's just ridiculous. So much damage. Sujo actually taking it, even though there are minions there. I'm not sure if that's a good call. Craves getting taken down to half health almost instantaneously. Dragosult will be up in three seconds. Two, one, and it's all. Will we see him use it? Yeah, Dash is in there, gets the ult. The suppress is good from Skarner. Ulting out, being suppressed back in. So Graves had no love right there. Siri Arrow just trolling Ash a little bit there. But wow, so much initiate on the brand's face, and he leaves a little bit of a stain there on the concrete. But uh, yeah, Sujo running in there, taking the turret. Olaf is there, does not have his ult anymore. He's gonna try to go in there, get something done. Actually, picks up the kill there on Skyner, but the exhaust is too good. And finally, Nosjax getting that revenge for having been dominated in basically the entirety of top lane. So, uh, rematch coming off. We probably will see GG here at any moment. 7 NP getting two shot by Gragas. And yeah, Gragas kind of ran away with this game. Even has a sheen there as well, so. Lil Will kind of QQing over the lack of a battery backup. 
But it looks like Soon Joe has a little bit of stuff uh, he wants to do afterwards. Brand saying, yeah, he had kind of a rough laning phase. I think it was, uh, I'm going to give that credit to Andy because he did work during laning phase. So, Gragas is here. He's going to clear out the base. <laughs> yeah, really, is just saying, hey, thanks for doing... Olaf top apparently this guy knows how to play Olaf versus Aurelia because that was a little bit uh, a little bit effective <laughs> Fiddlestick saying thanks for taking all my blues because he basically he had a, a blue at like 20 minutes and then uh, Brand had one at like 24 so those were like the only blues that they possessed at any time during that game Aurelia is kind of trolling around the jungle looking to catch somebody off guard Kind of wants to 1v1 this guy right here they will fight one another but uh, with Sunjo and Andy there Waiting in the wings. 324. Not sure what my voice just did right there, but uh, top turret goes down. 324 damage there from uh, from Olaf once he pops his W. If he can hit that again, that's just going to be like, oh my goodness, ridiculous. Rarbish trying to get some damage done. The ult actually popped out, but the instantaneous counter ult, the fail flash. Envy jumping in there, getting the Zonius out, but I'm not sure if that was you know, very effective. Sunjo will go down here, but uh, that will be a one for two trade. So, you know, if they can keep making these plays, actually catching Nostrax out of position, gets the Equalizer down, or uh, rather the uh, Equilibrium strike. You know, Equalizer, Equilibrium. This is not Rumble Salt, however, so Nostrax actually gets out of there. 3,400 health with that Warmogs. We do not see a Warmogs on Olaf, so he's just sitting at 32, so uh, yeah, probably would be a good item, but uh, right now has that chain vest, might think about getting a Randuin's, either that or selling it for a Warmogs, although it's a little bit late in the game to get Warmogs, unless you think you can farm it up, they will see that Dragon, unfortunately, is gone, so, sorry guys, but uh, it's 25 to 18, 58k to 50k, actually just hovered the camera over people backing right there, which I know is absolutely mind-blowingly astounding for you guys. But if we check out the action going on on the screen, we can see that it's not there. Uh, dominating position here, seven towers down for Fly Society Gaming, and uh, Nostrax has essentially made it out of that laning phase. It was so brutal, but uh, even still only sitting at 150 far versus the almost 300 for Olaf and 200 for Graves, so... 267, almost 200. Ash initiating there onto Brand. I was way too focused on the uh, the killing of the red there. It was extremely effective at uh, countering my observing skills. So apologies for that. But every member of Lith is going to go back, and every member of is he just waiting there? Not sure, yeah, we've had a little bit of a timeout once again, so... Not sure if absolutely everybody DC at the same time, but no, we are back in the action, and uh, yeah, they are going to push into Lyft's space, and by they, I mean Fly Society Gaming, who look to be in an absolutely dominating position this game, really needs to have a last whisper, actually already has a complete three-shotting, oh my goodness, the Zonius is up once again, the barrel waiting to be popped, and that is so brutal, but Ice Jan... This guy does not die. 1v1-ing Nostrax will actually get the kill thanks to that knockup. But uh, is it going to be enough? Actually, Ice Chan, yes, with the clutch shield going down to below 20 health. Picks up that kill. And this guy right now there is the, the MVP, Warden's Mail. Will Will chasing for the ace. And what am I even seeing here? I, I don't I don't even know. Wait, 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 what, is, what is my face currently like located at? which is, should have been aware, but you know what? These guys know what's up. They're going to get a free and clear Baron off of this. The kill count, only five kills deficit. Lil Will has his last Whisper, so he's only like one item behind this Ash, which is not significant. He has actually been taking that for a long time, but now that Ice Chan is here, this guy with 307 damage dropping down there to 159, only 89 right now is that uh, debuff from Baron is so, so strong. At preventing 1v1ing, it just, like, derps your AD down to basically nothing, so. Yeah, now I'm a little bit more unbiased. 
As before, it looks really in favor of Flash Society Gaming. If we check the gold counts on all these guys, Graves going to go back and buy with 2,300 gold. He may pick up a zeal, may actually turn a Vampiric Scepter into a Bloodthirster? I'm not sure if that's quite enough to pick that up. He might actually just be waiting. Brand is not looking too good right now. He needs to uh, get out of Dodge, if you know what I mean. Graves actually spent absolutely none of his money. He's going to go out there, farm a little bit more, wants to buy that Bloodthirster. Ash does not have it. He has a, she has a Wriggles instead, so poor man's Bloodthirster right there. Lil Will actually really hurting his team right now by not having spent that gold. Those could be so many excellent items. You know, a BF sword, basically any form of massive attack damage would be so, so useful right now. He just needs a little bit more gold. If you guys know what item he's going to buy before I do, then, you know, shout outs to you guys. But he really needs to spend at 2,500 golds. Both teams know that after, actually, yeah, Fly Society more, knows that after that horribly failed engagement, they cannot screw that up one more time. If they do, then they've successfully exercised their pitching arms to the extent that they can now throw this game with the greatest of ease. So they want to be really careful. They're going to go back. They're going to pot up. Ash actually potting up with a QSS in the bag as her one defensive item. Still has wriggles, so that's a little bit of both defense and offense. She's up to 1.7 attack speed. Graves sitting at 1.4, so that's a big difference, but... Rarbish knows this next tower is going to be top lane. Ugh, Yon's OP! All goes up! Snatches one kill on 7 Envy right now. The ult goes on to Rarbish. Not the most effective person to get that ult off. Instant cleanse. There by Olaf. He is running in there. Will he be able to pick up Devastation without an ult? He will not be able to catch Ash, who's just going to kite and do so much damage. The exhaust going off. Devastation, 1v1 like this. Olaf, if he gets one more attack off, Devastation picks up the kill on Ice Chan. That is so much damage. And that slow was on point right there. Lil Will trying to get it done. Archangels is popped right now. That was what he's going to go for. But the instantaneous jump on there by Sunjo and Nosjax will be enough to pick up the kill. And wow, such an epic team fight. Devastation with that last 1v1 against that Olaf. So, so epic. Rarely do you see squishy AD carries like Ash going up against someone as tanky and, like, destruction-y as Olaf. Yeah, that's your, uh, that's your adjective for the day. But, yeah, Devastation. Yeah, so many throws this game. Both teams giving it away at so many points. That DC was clutch, but GG... That is going to be the game, so congratulations to Flash Society Gaming for picking up this scrim against uh, against Lisp. So if you liked what you saw, guys, go ahead and like, subscribe, whatever you guys want to do. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.